Hi guys, Mama Supreme here. Today's video is a continuation of a more in-depth look at binaural and monaural beats and that which it is used for. So, to put it very simply, the human brain has natural brain waves and those brain waves sync simultaneously with any type of electric frequency that is being emitted naturally around us all over the world. Everything has an electrical base to it somehow, even the human body. Uh, so if you've ever come in contact with people and you immediately know without a word coming out of their mouth, uh, there's something not good about them. Or somebody ha gives off a very good feeling and you want to know more, you gravitate towards them. That's a field of energy that is coming from the human body. It could be a state of mind at that moment, or it could be genuinely the person's chakras uh, emitting that. And they're just a good person or just a bad person. You never know. That's all it's spiritual and intuitive, but it comes from something very real. Now, um, when you entertain your brain waves, it's extremely beneficial. So therefore it's essential to do this. Even if you're not doing it with binaural or monaural beats in mind, there are medical plans that are put in place as an additive to Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, people who have had strokes, so on and so forth. They do brain wave activity to get it going again, to correct and transmit correctly through the brain waves to the connectors in the neurons, okay? So our neurons in our brain, there is an entire system there that has a purpose. And that purpose is connected to the brain wave. So this, this is very in depth and I'm not gonna go very deep into it because I'm not in the mood to do that. But for anyone who has that much more of an interest in it, you can very easily Google it and They'll explain it to you in way further detail than I'm willing to do so right now. So, basically, binaural and monaural beats are a recreation of brainwave frequencies. And this is why they sync. And there is an end goal. So if you're using them for a particular goal, you just need to coincide them together. That's it. You don't even have to sit there and meditate. You just have to sit there and absorb and just allow it to do what it is meant to do. Uh, and there's nothing negative about it, unless you're doing it incorrectly, listening to wrong, wrong frequencies, overloading your system, all this can cause damage. So do everything with, you know, proper intention. Now, basically, um, our chakras, same purpose. Our chakras are connected to our organs and our organs are connected to the neurons. The neurons send chemicals. Chemicals come from the brain and different parts of our brain. Our brain is broken down into five um, bands, electrical bands, kind of like a radio. And that's the spectrum of the brain and the brain waves and all that which is connected to the neurons. So when you think serotonin, dopamines, all these things that actually physically come out of your brain, chemicals that are created from your brain, uh, they do something. No different than if you were to go and get drugged up on a particular type of drug. All those drugs and substances, be it natural or not natural, are directly co correlating to chemicals that the brain creates. So with that being said, uh, there is historical and ancient medicines that have been documented. And today, we still use that. So for instance, Reiki. 
Reiki is an ancient Japanese form of healing. And it involves many things, not just, you know, the use of, let's say, singing bowls, which also comes from the Himalayans and the Tibetans. Uh, it's used in many cultures, but from what I understand, um, it, it came specifically from the Himalayans and the Tibetans, but it did spread, obviously. Uh, and it is part of many different cultures. Uh, the singing bowls are a source of healing by way of using binaural or monaural beats. Uh, and with Reiki, they also use your senses. So there is smell involved. There is touch involved. Um, there's something I learned many, many years ago. Uh, and I also just recently heard uh, Alan Watts discussing it in everything sensory related to the human body and in Japanese culture how if you're in the darkest of darkest rooms, this is how they explain it, uh, and your eyes just cannot function, they serve no purpose to you, it will send a signal to your brain and your brain will now shut off and send that visual signal to another portion of your body. So now your hands are actually your eyes. And this is 100% true. Anybody that's been in the darkest of darkest rooms or areas, the only thing you're counting on is your feet touching walls or moving and your hands. But they are becoming your eyes, much like a blind person. And that is sending visuals to your brain and giving you guidance. So, Alan Watts, I've mentioned in my previous videos, he really opens you up to the reality of human nature and the pure function of us as humans. Uh, and I'm starting to find a lot of what he's saying in almost everything I see, touch, and learn about. The Temple of Seti in Egypt, uh, it's still in function today. People travel there to use this temple as a healing. They've got all types of ancient medicines and mythologies of medicines in there, as I explained in my previous video. Uh, and this is still going on today. For instance, I use my bathtub and I actually go ahead and run binaural beats into the bathtub from the side so that with my head submerged with my ears and I just go into a deep trance. I just lay there and I let my mind flow wherever the hell it wants to go. I let it come through the water. Every now and then I'll open my eyes and I'll see the water resonating with the frequency of the binaural beat that I am using. Uh, as I said about Alan Watts, I will actually play Alan Watts and binaural beats at the exact same time. And I've been doing this for a really long time with my kids without them even realizing that they're going to sleep to that. Sometimes I just have them listen to him just to have a better understanding of who you are as a person and what it means to be a human. Um, but I use this on my children, no different than somebody would play crickets, whales singing, dolphins. There's all kinds of beautiful um, sounds that you can play and it's very relaxing and soothing to a child. Uh, and I instead what I do is I play binaural beats. That's simply it. So, and what I use my binaural beats and monaural beats for, there's always a purpose, a topic, an idea in advance, a plan. And I use it for whatever purpose it is that I need it for and it never fails me. It's something that I, it's in my everyday life. I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't actually use binaural beats at one point or another throughout the day. Also, there's a lot of things that I'm deeply involved in and have been for a long time and I'm still in hot pursuit of uh, completing that journey or that discovery. Um, so far, I've, I've not discovered any type of falsehoods. It's more sheer curiosity uh, and wanting to reach the end goal of that curiosity so I can then move on to another level of information and enlightenment. So I am also into Stephen Greer, 
David Wilcox. Um, there's like a, a huge community of these people and they, they all have one focus in mind and that's basically to save humanity. Uh, but there's so much involved in their goals and them trying to stop the suppression of medical such inventions and things that can be used to aid our planet and our people. Um, there's also, as I had mentioned in my previous video, Tesla. Tesla deeply correlates with that. Now, if you think of what Tesla was doing, right, when he finally opened up about where all of his discoveries had come from, his inventions, and, and there was just so many. I mean, you could not put a number on it. Uh, and they were all functional. They were even being stolen from him. I mean, he even had to get smart and break his patents up so that no one can ever piece them back together again. Um, and the, the way that he lived the ends of his life, uh, where he had his greatest achievements, where he had set up shop in and around the Niagara Falls region. And of course, that is an ever flowing, powerful source of water which converts to energy. Um, a lot of his inventions, like the Tesla coil and what have you, are still being used today. Um, when you think about the fact that he, he built the Faraday cage as a protective guard for him to then get inside, you know, kind of like the death cage at the circus and you know, the motorcyclists and all the stunt guys are in it and um, there's a purpose to it. There's, anyways, so he was in the Faraday cage and the amount of electricity that he was surging around himself, but yet he was protected and he's in there for hours and hours on end and he's obtaining information, he is downloading information and this information is helping him make inventions, create things and where he says it came from. You know what I mean? So that's basically the same thing that I've been doing for a long time too, trying to make a connection with the universe, with whatever is out there. I'm trying to send the electoral you know, connections out there and see what comes back like a telephone. You know, it's it comes right back. I am the receptor. We are all the receptors as human bodies. So if you're going to use your human body in this tiny sense as a receptor, well, you might as well use it in the, you know, the maximum sense as a receptor. So with binaural beats, I am going to put a bunch of links in of all the top ones that I use and what I use them for. Um, and it's basically up to you to do what you want with that you know, and use it to whatever advantage you wish to do it uh, and experiment with it. But I, I highly recommend using it for so many purposes, especially when you have um, mental disorders or you are afflicted somehow mentally by traumas and your environment, your circumstances, uh, physical ailments. You know, there's so many things that you can use it for and you can at least try better that you know than drowning yourself in medication medication that's going to serve no purpose and no justice to you whatsoever really that's the way i look at it and at the end of the day when you look at scientifically what has been proven right and this doesn't involve financial means you know that there's a financial means to the proving of that information like tesla you know his inventions didn't come at a cost. Like the, we would, we don't have to pay for electricity and all kinds of other things. Like we could save the world from so much damage and humanity not having to dump out money, you know, and the whole cycle of having to get the money in the first place. You know, when you think of all that from something that is a free natural source, that's crazy. That's utterly absurd to me, but it is what it is. So, Already we know that scientifically there is over 500 neurological patterns and sources in the brain. 
and each one of those serves its own purpose as I was explaining uh, with brain waves. Um, I've been watching and I continue to watch TEDx. This started about, well, I don't know, I want to say about four or five years ago. Uh, that just captivates me. I mean, I just watch it for the sake of watching it. Gaia, Gaia gets me too. There's something about Gaia TV, I just, wow. So, um, Ancient Aliens, there's just, there's so much. Like, there's a few things that I've been looking into and I would love to go do some discoveries on it. Um, like for instance, the Montauk Projects and the Montauk Boys. Um, out here we have Shag Harbor and this is the only and most renowned, not classified, completely public, unresolved um, extraterrestrial situation that occurred here in Nova Scotia. Uh, and I have gone out there and I am very willing to try to delve into that on a far deeper level uh, and try to get some answers. I mean, it's public, it's open information. It's not like classifying um, top-notch secrets like the US do, that they are now just starting to declassify. Canada's very much more open and liberal about that kind of information. And it's, it's really exciting when you think about the depths of our planet and what why and what is is it why is it coming here you know like why is this stuff here or coming here right there's got to be a reason and then at the same time there it's not damaging us it's not going out of its way it they that whatever it is uh to bring harm to humans you know and the human race and other such stuff that is living on planet earth so you have to ask yourself why you know and what can you discover from that you know what type of connections can be made with that so that's one of my journeys and i've been doing that a lot with um particular tools that is provided by dr stephen greer i hope to make some documented discoveries through that and put it out there. I am very interested in opening myself up in ways to continue my life patterns as a philanthropist, if you want to call it that. I feel like I've always been a philanthropist at one point or another. Um, and just the discovery of what it means to be an exoteric and just learning from that and life experiences and experimenting and just working towards you know that hot pursuit of a new source of information a new way of looking at the outside and the inside you know um just like one little piece of information that months down the road can have a trigger effect and then synchronicities and then take me to another path that I'm obviously predestined to make my way to that path and find out what's at the end of that path and the fork in that road and where does that go? Where does that lead me to? Another source of information. And this is the brain of an Aries, I feel. Like, I don't think I'm the only one like that. I feel like a lot of Aries have this same type of enlightened, like, need for enlightenment, you know? I'm really deeply into the Zodiacs as well. Sorry, my kids. Oh, my gosh. You never stop asking me questions with the Zodiacs. Um, I love different, not for, you know, divination, but for the fun of it. Uh, I love all types of oracle cards. Um, the Aboriginal uh, animal guidance cards, um, ruins, Chinese fortune sticks, like all of this is so much fun and I use it, not Ouija boards or anything like that, I'm not into that kind of stuff, uh, but I, I am into paranormal and paranormal psychology and in by no ways do I mean like, oh, a ghost. Nothing like that. I mean like the unknown um, 
and phenomenons, enigmas, you know? that That's the kind of stuff that drives me bananas, like, where I, my, I can't stop. Like, I need to get to the source and try to figure it out. And then there's lots of other people in the world that do the exact same thing, that have obsessions with these type of things, not because it's for ghost hunting and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I try to make connections with the moon phases and you know the positions of planets which is connected to astrology and what have you but with in terms of frequencies there are every planet this is why i use jupiter spin every planet has its own resonant sound and frequency that is ever going it never stops and so does our own planet so does the sun moons what have you jupiter for me is a very fascinating planet and everything revolving around jupiter for instance my youngest daughter domenica her middle name is europa she is one of the moons of jupiter and there's a very particular reason behind all of that uh and not just that but because she's connected to ancient times and a story that was told uh, through an artist. I, I'm also deeply connected to artists. Tidian was a famous 16th century Renaissance artist from Venice and he retold the story of the rape of Europa and it has to do with the king of Jupiter and he comes down and disguises himself as a white bull drenched in flowers and the story of who Europa is and what drew her to the white bull and then his trickery to bring her out into the ocean on his back as she held on to one horn uh, and the, the whole story of the painting and the fact that my daughter was supposed to be born in April and it all went wrong and she ended up coming out the Taurus so therefore I had her name already picked out, everything ready, and then there was a change. And so I needed to alter everything about who she was, the individual from birth that she was going to become. And so, because she was going to become a Taurus, I needed to come up with something significant related to a Taurus. And there, hence, is the story of Europa. So her name is Domenica Europa. Uh, and these type of things fascinate me about making your child into something from the get-go it's not just what you teach them it's that moment of creation and that creation being brought into the world and so the backstory to who she is that painting and being born a taurus um the moons all that stuff her deep connection to uh, space and everything related to that it all comes down to, ironically, who she is today, which I would have never known from the day I gave birth to her. There's a purpose to my children's names. I have a lot of deep, profound respect for the Egyptian culture. And so my other daughter, Markella, her middle name is Cleopatra. Uh, and it goes beyond just Cleopatra, the symbol of beauty uh, and what have you. There's a whole backstory to her being called Cleopatra. Uh, and to this day, I use those stories in that historical sense and even mythological sense to give significance to both my children um, for who they are and how they were brought into this world and the purpose of their living being souls, right? Um, so when it comes to like the moons and all that, I do, and the planets, I do listen to those frequencies as well. Uh, when I do moon phases and I use it through the binaural and the monaural beats uh, and I, I try, I try to use it to my advantage. Um, aside from that, I'm not quite sure what else I can share about this particular topic, uh, but there is a lot to be shared about it. It's just too much to like dissect. and. It's so vast, the information related to this, that I have to like seriously sit back and think to myself, how can I dissect piece for piece and find a way to integrate it into the next following 
topic of conversation. So with that being said, I'm going into a portion of this and the ancient medicines relating to substances, natural substances um, that are being used medically right now. There are actual medical studies going on. There are actual medical doctors that are leaving Canada and what have you to go to these locations to try it for themselves to see what does it do. So I had mentioned before with TEDx, a lot of the people that I was already listening to and becoming very intrigued by, I have come to find out that they are now on TEDx. For instance, there is this one doctor. I would give anything to meet this guy. And he's in Mexico, but he does go all over. He, does, he was actually in Montreal, and unfortunately there's no way I could have gone to that. Uh, he is Dr. Octavio Redig. Um, and he uses ancient medicine from the Mayans and the Aztecs related to a toad from the Sonoma Desert. And what he does is he, he harvests the toxins from the toad. He does this without hurting them. Uh, he goes at particular times into the Sonoma Desert. Uh, he captures them. He takes their toxins, medicine, uh, onto glass. He dries it and he's got a very abundant amount of this stuff and he uses it for medical purposes and his backstory and why and how all this started and the journey that he's on today and will continue to be on um, is unbelievable it's profound and it is beautiful I don't want to take part in that I really do want to have that connection and do what it is that he is doing and be able to say one day in the future, I got to meet Octavio Rettig and I took part in this. I experimented with this and this is what it did for me. So uh, what he uses is it comes from the toad specifically is called Bufo Alvarios. There's actually a documentary that he's done right now under that name. And he is considered the toad prophet. So I know that you can probably find it. Um, I'm, I think with Amazon, Google Play Movies, I think Microsoft in their, their store also has it. I can't say for sure where you can get it. So I've gotten it in other ways. But I know that you could get it. So it's something to look into. Definitely. Octavio Reddick, the toad prophet. He's also on TEDx. You could easily go watch his um, his conference and seminar at that at that location when he did that at TEDx when he had done that. Um, now, not just that. There's other stuff like I want to go do the ayahuasca journey. Now, unfortunately, I cannot do this with my kids. You know, I'm, as much as I would love to, uh, and go detox my body completely and just find a new discovery, you know, a new clean transition into a, a new version of the world after this cleansing with the shamans and what have you. I wish I could do that. Yeah. Um, but I can't. So, unfortunately. Uh, but going to see Octavio Reddick, that to me, that that is it's even more above and beyond the dmt and the ayahuasca and it's it's such a mix and it's a natural mix it comes from a freaking toad one very particular toad and his discoveries about this toad and just it's just so beautiful when you look at the whole backstory of it all so i'm gonna do a follow-up to ancient medicines and the involvement of the binaural beads and the monaural beads and the discoveries of the human brain and where that can take you to next. So, um, as I said, I'm going to be putting the links down. I hope that this video was again informative and piques your curiosity, makes you want to go Google some stuff uh, and just learn something new. So, until my next video, over and out, Mama Supreme.